Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. So first up today, we have the weekly insurance registration data for Tesla China, 15,886. Here's that data plugged into the table. And if you want to compare it to the same week in quarter four, that number was 8,915. More importantly though, if we take the weekly insurance data for the month of March and add it up, it brings us to around 64.8 thousand. So totaling the first three months so far, still with a bit of time left in March, Tesla has already set a new quarterly record for domestic deliveries in China. The previous number to beat was Q4 of last year, 121.6 thousand. Right now they sit at 125.7 thousand again with time left. Honestly, what more is there to say other than an awesome job by the Tesla team? Usually Q1 is slower than Q4, but Tesla is up sequentially quarter over quarter. And we know all about the troubles in China, the economy not being on solid footing, the price wars going on across the auto industry, plenty of new competition. This was a great quarter for Tesla China. The weekly number four BYD was up relative to last week to 43.4 thousand. If you wanted to compare it to the same week in Q4, Four, that number was 51.6 thousand. Here's the bar chart for BYD. As you can see, they're still below the peak deliveries from quarter four. Honestly though, later in the video, we'll touch on BYD's earnings for last year, which is more interesting than this data. And here's the bar chart for Tesla. As I mentioned a few weeks back, remember that the last week or two of each quarter does typically see a tick down. If you go back to the end of quarter four, you'll see that trend right here. And if you go back to the end of quarter three, which would be the end of September, you see this slowdown here as well. It's just part of how Tesla manages its production allocation by geography from week to week. With that said, although this weekly reading is down from last week, in terms of where it would fall in quarter four, it would still be the second best week throughout quarter four. Tesla should be one of the only at least volume manufacturers that is actually up quarter over quarter for quarter one this year. For BYD, if you add up the Q4 registration data, that was about 552,000 sales. Compared to quarter one, adding up the data so far, they're sitting just over 392,000. So BYD likely to be down quarter over quarter. The Kilowatts captured another video of the Cybertruck out in the wild, this one with the wiper blade attached. A lot of people have been talking about the four wheel steering from this video clip, and we'll touch a little bit more on the handling here in a second. But at the end is everybody's favorite part as you get this little wiggle before the Tesla Cybertruck pulls off. Responding to this video reposted by Matthew DR, Elon Musk said, perhaps better than a Model Y in turning. On that note, we also got this video of the kilowatts trying to capture the Cybertruck, do a U-turn at this light. You get a little glimpse of it for a second. It's hard to tell what's really going on. And that's about all you see. <laughs> And just so you know, the Model Y having a poor turning radius is actually a fairly common complaint, not just on places like Reddit, but the Tesla Motors Club forum and other forums as well. Here's one more quick video I'll play for you in slow motion so you can kind of see what's going on. Not really sure what you will take away from this, but we'll look at all of the Cybertruck clips that we can get. I'm sure most of you have not forgotten about this, but in case a few of you have, don't forget Tesla said that they have a team of people in-house that are actually creating accessories specifically for the Cybertruck. So could it be something that's mounted to the Cybertruck among many other things I would imagine? That has to be a very exciting topic for the future. I stand by what I said, we need another Cybertruck event to go over all of the detail, all of the features, the specs, and the pricing before the actual launch. I don't think we'll get it, but it would be great if they did it. One of my biggest questions about the Cybertruck remains, will it have steer by wire? What do you guys think? Listen up, I know some of you know the drill when it comes to Exter, the sponsor of today's video, but here's all you really need to know why I keep bringing them up. They make high quality products with high quality materials and they have awesome useful features. It's that simple. I've used this wallet for over a year now every day so I know everything about it. It's held up really well, it's low profile, it's quick, convenient, and smart with RFID protection, and mine has a slot for an Apple AirTag so you know exactly where it is at all times. 
you want something slimmer, they have solar power trackers. You can use these to find your phone or you can actually use your phone to find the tracker. One of the things I'm most excited for for the Cybertruck is taking weekend trips with Ashley. Exter has you covered for trips like this with their overnight bag and many other products too. So check out Exter if you'd like. You can get up to 25% off your order if you use my link in the description below. Thanks to all of you choosing to support the channel in this way. Elon is continuing his roast of public figures. This time it's Bill Gates after he was talking about how we need to change almost everything to fight climate change. Elon said not having a massive short position against Tesla would be a step in the right direction. Here we have some United States data from Cox Automotive for the overall auto market going over Q1 trends of this year and some data from last year as well. Throughout the whole year of 2022, Tesla's market share was 3.8%. So far in Q1 of this year, that number has jumped to 5.1% for a 1.4% gain, the highest on this list by far. The biggest loser on the list was Toyota with a 2% market share loss. In terms of Q1 market share this year, Tesla is now ahead of companies like VW, Subaru, Mazda, BMW, and Daimler. Also interesting, if you compare Q1 this year to Q4 of last year and look at the percent changes, Tesla again leading the way in first by far, up 37.6%. Second place is Lucid at 26.8, but they're of course coming from a very small base. The biggest loser, BMW, losing over 26% market share, and another notable one, Toyota, down 13.5%. You know how I often say we're still in the first inning of this game? Well, part of that is because Tesla would still need to do a 3x in terms of United States deliveries per quarter to even really be in the conversation to be in the top of this list. This is also from that Cox Automotive Report, 10 predictions for the 2023 auto market. Just want to highlight a few. Slow growing economy will put pressure on the automotive market. New vehicle inventory levels will continue to rise. Federal incentives will encourage more fleet buyers to consider electrified solutions. Vehicle affordability will be the greatest challenge facing vehicle buyers, which means if Tesla can keep lowering prices and lowering costs, that's of course a competitive advantage. And sales of EVs in the US will surpass 1 million units for the first time. Check out this dealer sentiment index. Going back to Q1 of 2021 and 2022, only three to 5% of dealers said that interest rates were a challenge holding back their business. Fast forward to Q1 and Q4 of last year, that number has spiked to over half. Just like the macro impacts the stock market in the short term more than fundamentals, the macro in the auto market is going to have some implications as well. We all need to keep in mind throughout this year, high interest rates and a slow sluggish economy. Point being, if Tesla can pull off good numbers this year in this environment, then you know what that means for what they can do in the future when interest rates come back down and hopefully the economy picks back up. One last one, check this out. For January of this year, the new vehicle weighted average auto loan rate is hovering around 9%. And if you look at the used market, the green line, the number is at 14%. Recurrent Auto just did a study surveying over 15,000 EV owners. Turns out only 1.5% have had to replace their batteries outside of a recall or warranty period. Most of those were older Nissan Leafs. If you look at the chart, you'll see the Chevy Bolt and the Hyundai Kona as the main culprits, but those had official battery recalls. If you look at the Model S hovering between 3 and 4%, just remember that that's been on the market much longer than some of these other vehicles. The survey included data from 13 different vehicle models. Just wanted to share this in case you need an article for battery pack FUD, <laughs> this will be below. NHTSA will be further looking into Tesla. We have a new situation covering around 50,000 Model Xs from 2022 and this year, where front seat belts were not sufficiently connected at the factory. There were two complaints, neither of which involved an accident, and this is the step before an actual recall. The United States and Japan just agreed to a new trade deal that will allow some Japanese automakers access to at least part of the $7,500 tax credit. This deal will also limit either side from enacting export limitations when it comes to lithium, nickel, cobalt, graphite, and manganese. 
As you can see though, at least part of this agreement is still up in the air and will boil down to what the treasury decides. With that said, they're saying EVs made with minerals mined or processed in Japan were expected to meet the tax exemption requirements. The goal of this is pretty simple, not only to strengthen the supply chains for critical minerals, but to reduce our reliance on China with our trade partners. The minerals agreement will be reviewed every two years. Not a Tesla app has shared from the Tesla user manual for the sexy lineup different weight guidelines for different areas of the vehicle. You can see the previous guidelines here. Places like the front trunk have increased the weight limit, in this case double, while the rear trunk lower compartment has seen a significant decrease, but the rear trunk upper floor has seen a significant increase. If you total the old previous guidelines, that's 470 pounds, and the new guidelines go up to 485 pounds. Here we have those BYD earnings for 2022. They actually made $2.4 billion in terms of net income, which was ahead of analyst expectations. Looking at this chart for BYD's net income over the past 10 years or so, it really should be no surprise that 2022 was their breakout year as we saw their volumes increase significantly, so they definitely have the benefit of economies of scale. And don't forget, they do a lot more than just build cars. I have seen some articles getting a little carried away like this one. I just wanna highlight these results were for 2022. Tesla's price cuts were in Q1 of this year. So it's too early to tell how Tesla's price cuts have impacted BYD in terms of financial results. Thus, this headline is a bit misleading. What's crazy though is almost half of BYD's profit for all of 2022 came in quarter four, reaching 1.06 billion of that 2.4 billion for the entire year. We've all been saying now for a while, sure, BYD can move numbers, but can they actually make money? They may have hit their stride, guys. The gross profit margin for automobiles increased to 20.4% throughout all of last year, up from 3.7% in 2021. And yes, I didn't overlook it. I saw this little and their related products. I'm not sure what Reuters is referring to with that. I also really want your opinion on this. Do you think that hybrids should be included as ICE sales or electric vehicle sales? Because statements like this, BYD has surged past Tesla in EV sales, to me has always felt a bit misleading. I think hybrids are more of an ICE vehicle, and I would argue so does Ford because it's classifying hybrid vehicles with its ICE vehicle business. But honestly, let me know what you think. So yes, BYD's financials for 2022 look really good so far. We still have to wait and see how they handle 2023 after all the real price wars have started. Polestar is ready to spend $20 million on a marketing campaign for the upcoming Polestar 3 that is set to hit the United States market at the end of this year. This campaign will start in April. That means Polestar will spend more on this marketing push in quarter two than in the past nine months combined. It looks like a nice vehicle, but it definitely has an uphill climb as it's priced itself out of the tax credits even when it's built in the United States starting next year. And we have Lucid, according to sources, set to lay off 18% of its workforce, given that they had around 7,200 employees, that's 1,300 people set to be laid off. The narrative around the entire automotive industry needs to be cost control, where Tesla is already the leader. Find me on Twitter at DylanLoomis22. Don't forget, check out extra links below. Take advantage of that discount. Hope you have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.